Okay, so that is your basic defensive fundamental punishment tools, your stances that lead to your best offensive mix-up tools, and a bunch of utility moves in between. Let's put it all together and talk about the character's overall playstyle. For the most part, she runs a fast mix-up game up close. That's where most things come from, and it's where the best damage is done. I mean, that sounds obvious, right? You have to be close to be able to hit people, but this character is very true. When she is directly in your face, that's where the magic happens. Further out, not as simple, but she's good at getting back in. So it's really a stick in your stick and move kind of stay in your face character. But the phrase I like to say is stick and stick, right? Sometimes you want to just poke them and get out of there. With this character, you want to kind of stick them as much as you can. Keep on them. Do not let them breathe until they force you. Once they start getting good at like keeping you off, then maybe back off a little bit and try. Otherwise, you want to stay on them as much as you can. You don't want to give them an inch. Mid range is not too bad. There's some decent stuff out here, some nice longer range tools, and a lot of moves to get back in with the Fury. So when you do certain attacks like that, you're right back on them in a stance. Perfect. So mid range is decent, but you'd rather be in close range. So she has the tools to facilitate that. She can get right back on you in a hurry. Uh, defensively, she has some parries, and she's got some evasive moves. Uh, tracking isn't super duper great, so be warned of an opponent who is used to getting pressured a lot. If they are keen at sidestepping in the right moments or they make good ducks, gotta be careful. So you do have parries to try to, you know, bait out their counterattacks. You do have evasion, but those are definitely not the character's strength. They're there just to keep the, the whole thing honest, right? She can do it but it's not her strength. So be warned about an opponent who is really good at getting out of pressure mix up. You're gonna have to stick and move a little bit more with that guy. Uh, you have sidestep moves, which are also good of your own movement. To be able to just poke somebody in sidestep and then you know continue offense, that stuff works pretty good. Having sidestep tools and having a good back dash, pretty good stuff all around. Her movement is above average at best, but it's good enough to facilitate what she does, which is getting right back on you. Smack you with one of these things, stay in your face. Sidestep, stay in your face. That's what she does. And all you really want is to catch a big whiff punish, tag people with one of those. That's all you need. You're either getting counter hits out of your mix-up stances, or you're making them whiff entirely and pop them with something big. But those stance mix-ups are deadly. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it's very momentum-oriented. The longer she can keep doing this stuff and get away with it, the worse it's going to get every time something new pops up. You have to be proactive at stopping this character on defense. And so proactive defense means counter hits, right? There's plenty of ways to deal with stuff. There's always an answer in this game. So let's start with taking a look at her close-range offensive tools. Basic pokes. She has lots and lots of jab options. There's 1-1, one, one, there's 1-2-2 one, two, two we talked about as your basic punisher, the 1-2-3, and 1-2-4-4. Four, four. All of these are very different, but it's 1-1 one, one you need to pay attention to because it's the only mid. Everything else, 1-2-3, one, 1-2-3 two, three. One, two, three is a high, 1-2-4 is a low, so they're just going to fuzzy duck, right? Beat all of that stuff. Same thing with 2-1 and 2-4. Oh, 2 4 is actually good too. That's a mid. That's worth noting. The 2 4 has a mid extension. 1 1 has a mid extension. Those are what keep it honest. So 1 2 3 is a high and 1 2 4 is a low. Not totally practical. I wouldn't use these a ton, but they can be out there. You'll see Kazuya has a 1 2 4. Uh, Leo has a 1 2 4. And they're useless. They get blocked. The only interesting twist with hers is if you get that third hit on a counter hit, right? You get a free follow up there. Cool. And if they happen to block that last hit, and they try to punish it, one, two, four, four will launch them. But only if they punish. If they just stand there, they will not get hit by it. They have to block one, two, four, try to punish it, in order for that last hit to catch them. That's such an odd little situation. I wouldn't even bother mentioning it other than just to tell you that it does exist. Once in a blue moon, you might catch somebody trying to punish that, and now they'll know. Other than that, those are your basic jab sequences. One, one is a mid. 2-4 is a mid, but 1-2-2 two, two into stance for free is really what you want to focus on. One of your primary ways into stance, amazing stuff happens from that point forward. Uh, some other good tools you have are forward three, excellent range, jumps over lows, knockdown, safe on block, mid, wall splat. Like you, you can't really beat that, right? This is just fantastic stuff. Forward three is really, really good. No tracking, however. It's, it's everything else. It's fast, safe, mid, low crush, knockdown, 
It just doesn't track. That's the only weakness with it. Excellent move otherwise. Uh, down one is just a teeny bit slower. This is 19 frames, which is totally fine. But this is plus two on block and plus eight on hit, all of which force your opponent to crouch. This is just super duper annoying. You're just not going to get tired of this real fast. Plus two, force and crouch. Oh, I hate it already. I'm, I'm the one that's Lydia and I already hate it. So this is also excellent to keep your opponent super annoyed. Again, zero tracking. They can sidestep this move very, very easily. So be warned of that. It's the only weakness of these two moves. They are phenomenal pokes, but they don't track. Uh, back one. It's definitely worth noting because it's 11 frames and this is super fast. Back one, two exists and is a natural combo. Does force them into crouch. That's good stuff all around. But I feel like just doing back one and never finishing it really keeps them on their toes. They're going to be expecting that half the time, right? Waiting to punish it and you never deliver it. I think this really keeps that momentum in your favor. You do this and then you switch to something else. You counter hit him with this, whatever it might be. Back one has got such a fast tempo built into it. I think it works really well. Back one plus two, on the other hand, is the opposite. I think this slows down your tempo. This is like Brian's down two or Kazuya's down forward one. Lifts them up in the ground of that gut punch. Makes them think about what they just did. They see that and they realize they can't do anything for like a full second or two. That's just the complete opposite to slow down that tempo. Now they have to stand there and just respect whatever it is I'm about to do to them. So back one to speed things up. Back one plus two to kind of slow things down and set them up hard. And to complement all that is your back four homing move. Since we talked about how this is really good and this is really good, but they don't track, you need back four to complement that. You absolutely need it. Because they're, they're thinking right away, well, okay, her best tools don't track. Well, you need this to legitimize that. Otherwise, they will step you to death. And as we mentioned, back four, four, four is a natural combo if you're feeling super risky. You risk a launch punish for like 30 more damage. I don't know, it's there, but once every like 20 matches, maybe go for that. Unless you like, you know you have it, right? You know you're gonna force the sidestep. They've been doing this all day. Every single time you do this, they sidestep. Okay, well now I can go for it, because I know I got the setup. Other than that, very, very risky. Uh, speaking of sidestep, she has two of her own. This sidestep two on block is zero, which is pretty good. And the fact that it's zero and force crouch, is basically plus anyway, right? They can't do their full attacks. They're gonna lose if you tried to jab. Yeah. So sidestep two has got a mental frame advantage, as well as sidestep four being a natural launcher out of a high, 16 frame high, and it's a launcher. So her sidestep game is also pretty good. So next up, I wanna look at a series of moves that all have a, a mid-high bait to it. Strings that end in a mid or end in a high that you kinda of like give a little mini mix up out of. Uh, the first one is forward four three. These little can-can kicks. This isn't the best technique to use. I just want you to be able to see there are tons of these things with different risks and rewards. The fact that this is minus 10 on block, it's a little bit risky to start just throwing this out by itself, but there are ways around it. If they start punishing this thing, you do the four extension, bang. They get counter hit and they get launched. That third hit by itself is a launcher. So they try to punish, boom, you get a launcher. But, okay, oh, well, you're gonna do that. I'm just gonna start ducking this high. Well, now there is a mid version that'll knock him down, flip him over. So these are a series of moves that have that. A high they wanna try and duck, and a mid to back that up. Most of these mids are unsafe. A lot of them have counter hit properties. But if you wanna go and take a little bit of a risk, you can get a lot of stuff out of it. But I wouldn't do these all day, every day, because you're putting yourself at risk to get ducked or punished on block. I just want you to see how many of these things there are. And if you have an opponent that wants to try and duck whenever they can, try and sidestep whenever they can, this is how many more things they have to think about. There's like 12 of these moves they're thinking about before we even get to the stances. So forward, four, three, one is a mid, four, three, four is a high. Uh, next up is down forward one, two, same thing, that's a high. Down forward one, three is a mid that knocks them down. Second hit by itself on counter hit, launcher. So again, you can throw these out if you want to mess with people. Just be warned, these mid options are unsafe on block. If you're just doing one hit by itself all the time, eventually you might catch them with that second hit. That's what it's about. Doing these sparingly without giving your opponent time to predict or think about it, and they'll make the wrong decision. The more of layers of this, the more things you have that force that train of thought, the better it'll work out for you. Uh, next up is down forward three, four. This is a mid. And again, if you catch that counter hit, look what damage you get. You get 65. One more time. 65 damage from that counter hit, down forward three, four. Even that second hit by itself, you get your follow-up. 
Huge damage, right? Okay, well, that's a mid, and it's unsafe. But here's what's interesting about it, is this extension is a high. Down forward three, one, two. She faints into the punches. She doesn't do the kick at all, notice. She doesn't do this. She faints it into punches. Okay, those are good punches that knock him down. Those punches, that's plus seven on block. Plus seven! That's just a huge amount. An absolutely huge frame trap. So they do not want to stand there and take that too many times a day. There's so many things. They're getting plus framed here. They're getting plus framed there. They're getting plus framed with this, that, and the other. They want to try to duck this if they can. Down forward three, one, two is something they really want to duck. When they see something like that, they're like, okay, I need to get out of it. And that immediately opens up for this mid, the gut kick, and then that follow up. They took 40 whatever damage it was just for trying to duck. So these can be really dangerous if they start making bad decisions. Uh, back to one is another set. There's a high. Back to three has got a mid that checks it. This mid has also got a counter hit launcher, like everything in this game does nowadays. This one is safe, though. Back to three, that's a safe one you could just do all day. You get on counter hit, you get both hits. Really good string. So when you're, don't, you're doing the dance and you're poking and you're moving around, you just throw that one out. Sometimes you get the whole thing, you might catch that second one. Counter hit launcher. So this is definitely worth having. it. Back to one, I don't know if it's even worth throwing out there just in case they duck, right? Go for the mids, just the mid is safe. You don't need the high to try to force ducks in that particular situation. But you can see how many of these there are to think about already, right? Tons of this stuff. But we're not done. We got a couple more. Uh, back three, one. This is interesting again. It's a natural combo. Nice little chunk of damage. The second hit counter hit always has this property, right? Guess what that property is. It's plus 14. That counter hit is 14 frames of hit stun. So you get follow-ups for free. You can get your 14 frame string. Damn it. Or you can get your forward 2-4. Wall splat. Only on counter hit. When that one is a counter hit by itself, you can get that stuff for free. So, okay, that's cool. Again, it's unsafe. It's a mid, it's unsafe, so don't just throw this out all day. How do you encourage them to start ducking? Back three, four. This is a mid high. These double step kicks, natural combo. But they start seeing, okay, you start with this all day. I'm tired of this crap. I'm gonna start ducking. This is an obvious huge high kick. I'm gonna start ducking it. Well, that opens them up to the back three, one, as well as back three, four, follow up. Back three, four, quarter circle, one plus two. This is safe. If they try to do something slow after ducking this, you can tag them with that mid, and it's safe on block even if you do. They're not gonna be thinking about stepping after this. They're gonna try to duck this and blow it up, but this keeps that completely in check. There's no chance they're gonna try to sidestep you right there. If they do, then you need to rethink your whole strategy, right? That's what this is about, is reading the opponent, making bad decisions. They start making good decisions like that sidestep, it's gonna be a long day. So mix it up better, switch up what you were doing, never do the same thing twice. So back three, four, and it's follow-up is really interesting string to just be able to throw out. They wanna start ducking that one in the middle, back three, one covers your bases there. Uh, the last one is down forward four. Just a nice little generic mid poke by itself. This is really good at 15 frames, no harm here. Uh, down forward 4-2, however, not a natural combo, but you get it on counter hit. Cool. Well, that elbow by itself, plus one on block, right? Everything is plus one on block these days. When you go look in the Google Doc in the description, there, everything is highlighted in blue that's plus on block, and there's like 15 moves that are highlighted. Frame traps are everywhere. So that's a good one, right? And another plus on block they want to try to duck. Not to mention, if you do down forward 4-4, four, four, that's a high launcher, right? This is plus six on block and forces them to crouch. Look at that. Plus six force crouch. They are tired of this already. This is super annoying. That's plus six. That's plus one. I'm going to start ducking. Well, she's got a mid that backs that up. She has this little tumble kick, this back spinning jump kick. Knocks him down. This is minus ten. Most of these mids, as we said, are unsafe. So that's only fair. As good as the highs are, all you need is a mid to legitimize it. I'm okay if that mid's a little bit risky, too. It's cool. This advantage is still really and heavily in my favor, I think. With the huge frame traps and the fact that it's a plus six launcher, man, so much good stuff. So, look at all that. That was how many? A dozen so moves that are just mid versus high. And they want to try to get out of that stuff. They can't just stand there and take it all day. There's too many frame traps. They got to think of something to get out of that. And so it's your job to keep matching that something. So now, let's take a look at lows. We throw lows into the game, and it's just a mix-up party. There's so much this character can do. The lows are not great in and of themselves, but they are definitely good enough 
to annoy your opponent to the point where they have to start respecting lows and making ducks. And when they start making ducks, you start with the mids, etc., etc., etc. Right? Do the dance. Uh, down three one, I find really interesting. This is not a natural combo. The low hits, but they block that high. Well, if they block that high, plus four. Right? These, these frame traps are everywhere. So you can kind of think of this as a low that's just like plus four on hit. They just have to block that. Be warned, however, if they're in a crouch situation, they do not have to stand up. Like situation just like that. They will automatically duck that high if they stay down there. So be careful with it. That can be ducked by itself, and you might accidentally put them into a forced crouch situation and get yourself ducked. But nonetheless, have this low that's plus four is pretty cool. Down three, four is similar. It's low, high. That doesn't do anything to back it up. And I would probably never do this. I really don't think it's that good, right? If this is going to be plus four on block, all this does is keep them from sidestepping. I, I don't think you really need it that much. Just do the back four by itself to keep them from stepping. Down three, four doesn't really fit a good piece of the puzzle. So down three, one, a situational frame trap out of a low. Uh, down back two, this is the low she has that crushes highs. This is the only one that crouches. And between this and her generic down four, these are the only moves that leave her in a full crouch state. So do remember that for later. Down back two leaves her crouching. Uh, negative on hit though. This is only minus one. So you don't technically get free offense, but you can you can chance it sometimes. She's got plenty of things like that that'll keep him guessing. Just be careful. Minus 14 on block is kind of bad. Minus one on hit is kind of bad, but this is an okay low otherwise. It's, it's decent. It's just not great. Uh, down back four is fairly slow. This is 22 frames. That's a little bit slow, in my opinion, but this one is plus on hit. So that's plus one, and you do get offense from it at minus 13 on block, which isn't too bad. The only problem is that's slow. I'd be totally good with this move if it were like 17 frames, not 22. 22 is a bit much for this, to be her only low that's truly plus on hit. Eh, I don't know. Well, that's actually not true. Uh, down back three, two. It's got some interesting properties. You do down back 3-2 and it hits, you get that knockdown straight up. That's pretty good, right? As you can see, they block it. Whoo, that's a minus 26. That's a big crumple stun. Don't get that one blocked. But you're doing this, 37 damage in the knockdown. That's pretty good. Turns out this first hit by itself, the down back 3, that's plus 3 on hit all on its own. So this is actually a really good low poke at 16 frames. Doing 19 damage also is good, right? 19 damage off of a low is plus on hit. That's good stuff. It's up to you whether you want to take that plus three and, you know, run your offense from there or just put them on the ground, right? You got both choices there. That's kind of cool. That's an interesting low. It does two different jobs. So overall, that's not a huge package of lows. They're good enough. They're good enough that they start getting hit by this hell sweep crap too much. They're going to start ducking whenever you run up. Right? And then once they start ducking, once they start making a decision, you make the counter decision and it's on. You start that steamrolling. So let's look at the true mix-up offense. Let's look at what you do with the two major stances and their paths and then her full crouch game, I think, are the three sources of your most dangerous offense. Uh, the stance names, as I said, are kind of confusing to deal with. But if you just kind of think of them as the forward forward two path and the down forward two path and then split everything in those regards. So what you have in forward forward two, this leads into cat foot stance one. Your frame advantage is plus 15 here, so you can do whatever you want. There are plenty of options they can beat out with buttons and ones that they can't. So for the most part, two is the one that's unbeatable. This move will track and this move will beat all buttons. So if you're worried about it, Forward, forward, two, into two. You are totally safe there. It's only minus nine. You can do that all day. All day, and you have nothing to fear. But you got other choices. The one, plus four. Right? If they're just going to stand there and block, they're not going to do anything. Throw that at them, make another plus four on block, right? Frame traps are everywhere. So another plus four on, on block makes them want to start ducking. That's the way everything works. You have so many frame traps that make them want to do something about it. So you switch it up. Uh, your other two options, the three and the four, are slower. These can be interrupted, but they have good rewards as well, right? Three is a natural launcher. They get hit by that straight up, natural launcher. Good stuff. But it's a high, and it can be beaten out. Uh, the four is also a, is a counter hit launcher, 
but on normal hit, you get this huge knockdown. And on block, it's plus six. Dude, eight. This is eight. Sorry. Um, that block right there is plus eight into force crouch. That's just massive. That's so much hit stun. Like, you just... They're so tired of getting frame trapped already, and we're like halfway done. So, those four moves put together. A high that's plus on block. This mid that's plus on block even more. Another high that's a launcher. And another mid that they cannot beat out with buttons, right? What are you supposed to do there? What are you supposed to do? You, you don't, they don't have a universal answer. Honestly, I think their best bet would be duck. Because there are two options that are straight up highs. That's a high. And that's a high. The one and three are both high. So if they duck, they can launch punish you for both of those. Uh, the only thing that's keeping that in check is this two, which is minimal damage. But this four, that's 41 damage. Are they scared of 41 damage as much as they are getting launched or counter hit launched or whatever it is? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So ducking works really well to beat those two. But if they stop ducking, that very same move that was causing them... 41 damage or whatever it was is now causing them plus eight, right? So it's lose-lose uh, Sidewalking doesn't work super well. The one will track and so does the three for the most part Everything can happen, right? This game's got some weird side-to-side -side hitboxes. You miss time a sidestep you get hit, etc That's not a guarantee, but 90% of the time Catfoot one tracks and Catfoot three tracks. So Again, if they want to sidestep, they would beat your two, or they'd beat your four, for example. Actually, the two tracks pretty well, honestly. <laughs> One, two, and three all track pretty well. So the only reason they would want to sidestep is if they think four is coming. Because four is the frame trap on block, 41 damage on hit, counter hit launcher on button. So the only way around that one is to step. So maybe that's what they're thinking. Maybe that's the best answer. Four is the most universal threat and it loses to sidestep so maybe they start thinking sidestep every time this lands so you got you got options to back that up uh needless to say if you want to get started forward forward two two is is a good bet overall you're taking almost no risk they can't beat it with buttons they can't beat it with stepping just do that and you'll be okay eventually you get comfortable with what are my options what are my options you don't have time to think out in a battle you got to know what your options are and little by little, okay, I'm going to start doing the one. All right, I'm going to start doing the one. Okay, they're going to start ducking that. Let me switch it up, right? So you have to kind of build on it piece by piece. So two beats everything. One is a frame trap. Four is a frame trap. Three is a launcher. So you can kind of sit there and practice against Lydia and see which one's duck, which one's track. But for the most part, there is no answer. Everything has its own answer, but there's nothing universal. They can duck jab almost all. If they duck jab, it beats the one, it beats the three, and it beats the four. But if they try to duck jab against the two, they get launched, right? So is that worth it? Is risking a whole combo worth stopping the other three options? I don't know. So you kind of have to get familiar with each one and how much you want to leverage your own risk against pressuring them. And that comes down to thinking what your opponent might do. If you think they're a sidestepper, then you use your three or use your two. If you think they're a masher, then you use your two, whatever it might be. So on top of that, now we have Heaven and Earth. Heaven and Earth is the stance extension, which as we mentioned in the beginning, out in the open can be beaten. Even though they cannot challenge this stance without getting blown up potentially, they can challenge that. When they see the hand switch, they can challenge it. There's time enough. This transition is 20 frames, and from the stance, her fastest attacks are 16. So if you saw that hand that you can hit your magic four, or you can jab, and it will beat her. She she can't beat that, right? She doesn't have enough frame advantage to guarantee the double stance, unless it's like Oki situation where they're standing up right into it, or she uses the rage drive to get to this point. That rage drive on block has sufficient frame advantage where heaven and earth mix-ups are guaranteed. Otherwise, out in the open, a defensive player can beat heaven and earth, but look at how many things we've already talked about Duck this, don't duck that, press a button, avoid this, don't worry about that, frame trap, frame trap, frame trap. This is number like 37 on the list of things to have to think about, right? Odds are, though, this one is so dangerous, that's something they're going to train against first. How do I beat heaven and earth? How do I beat heaven and earth? So they might be ready for that. Be warned. And if they're not ready for this, party time. If they stand there and they let you go to heaven and earth, it is party time. 
like 1999 party time because this stance is so dangerous. Safe mid launcher, boom, right away. Low, plus on hit, counter hit launcher. Already, we're getting hella dangerous. And then we have a high that on block is a guaranteed hit. You get hit if you block this move, crazy stuff. You can get rage dried if you block this move. You can get wall splatted if you block this move. Stakes are super duper high. So obviously that's what you want, right? You wanna put him in heaven earth as much as you can, but you really can't. You need wall oki or a good situation in order to be able to do that. You could do like combo resets, right? You could just kind of do, you know, combo stuff and then like be right on top of them with stance mix ups. Instead of like hitting them after the screw attack, for example, you could just kind of do stance stuff. And then right there, you know, that'll trap them. Stuff like that could work really, really well, but you're sacrificing some damage to do it, which I think is okay. The risk you, or the reward you get from these stances is crazy high. And I think coughing up 10 damage is worth it. And at the wall, I think your situation is gonna be a little bit easier. Just keep them from tech rolling and you'll keep them trapped all day. It's gonna get super nasty. So onto the other path, uh, the down forward two path which leads into Catfoot 2. Again, same paradigm applies. The same situation works. 1-2-2, um, two, two, your Punisher also leads into stance directly with slightly less frame advantage. This is plus 8 into stance, whereas down forward 2 is plus 12 into stance. The only thing that changes is when you do the 1-2-2 two, two version of it, now your 1 and the low attack can be duck jabbed. That's it. Whereas if you do the down forward two version, they cannot duck jab those other two options. Needless to say, there's an option that beats everything no matter what. If you do one plus two, that beats all buttons. It beats all buttons and it tracks to her left. So that's a universal get out of jail free. Same as doing forward forward two into two. You can do that all day and get away with it until you're comfortable with going further. With this stance, you can do down forward two, one plus two all day and get away with it and you get that counter hit 57. You don't even need a combo. You get 57 if they try to press buttons against that. Just for one simple hit. Really, really strong. So that one is minus 10 on block. If you're gonna do that all day, that is minus 10 on block. Because I think the stakes are a little bit higher in this stance. They're a little bit higher because there is a low. Uh, but let's just go from the top real quick. Down forward two into one. Nothing fancy here. This is just a mid that knocks you down. It's kind of slow, but it's safe. Nothing ridiculous there. Uh, two, three, one sucks. This is the wall bounce that you're never gonna hit people with. It's fast and it tracks. But even if you get a counter hit, doesn't matter. The counter hit does not get you to whole string. So like that's kind of just a, a one-off. You could just do the two jab, honestly. Two jab is fine. That's really, I think, a better option out of that, that rather than going for the whole string and coming up Minus seven. You're still safe, but you're giving up your turn, I guess. Let's do down forward two and a jab, and forget the wall bounce exists. Uh, down forward two and a three. This is a counter hit launcher. On counter hit, you get a screw attack. And as we mentioned, when you do the other cat stance, three is a natural screw attack. So no matter which one you're doing, which path you take, when you're into your first stance and you press three, get ready for a screw attack. That's very likely to happen. And sometimes you'll just get that by itself, no screw attack, no big deal, you're good. Keep at it. But anytime you press three in a stance, get ready for a screw attack. That happens a lot. Uh, in this case, however, this backward stance, this one is fast. This one is 13 frames. They can't magic for you out of that one. Whereas the front one is very slow. The one that's a natural launcher out of cat foot one, that one is slow. The counter hit launcher out of cat foot two is hella fast. So these are both pretty likely to result in a screw attack. Be aware of that. And then four four is the low. 4-4 four, four is what makes this one a little bit spicier than Catfoot 1, and I think that's why your get out of jail free card is now a teeny bit unsafe, and your low is hella unsafe, because now it's so much more dangerous. Now they gotta consider ducking a lot. Anytime they see this stance, they gotta consider ducking. And what's good for Lydia is down forward 2 into that stance and forward forward 2 into that stance, they look almost identical until it's too late. Right, look how fast her, her hand transition is here. Right, her hand is only up for the briefest of seconds. And in this one, her hands are only paused for the briefest of seconds. That's impossible to read. You're not gonna be able to tell the difference. And the fact that down forward two and forward forward two look almost identical. You are not gonna be able to tell which stance you're in 
let alone what she might do. So needless to say, they have to fear this low. Even if you're doing forward forward two where there is no low, they have to fear a low because they can't tell that it wasn't down forward two, right? They have to respect that low. So they're respecting that low in their brain. They are going to be slower to, re to react to everything else. So you've got really fast options out of this stance too that lead to good counter hits. Now you got a low that's really dangerous. That's gonna make it twice as volatile for them to make good reads against you. Uh, the secondary stance in this case, whoops, Pouncing Tiger or Stalking Wolf. Not quite as good as Heaven and Earth in my opinion, but it deals simpler damage, I think, if you want to talk about it that way. You don't have to go all or nothing with this one. Uh, there's only one launcher. The low is a counter hit launcher. But that's it. There's no other big launcher, but there's plenty of damage to be had. The one, that does 45 damage. Look at that. 45 damage straight up. That's just crazy. Not to mention it's plus six on block. The mid is plus six on block. So they just stand there, plus six or 45 damage. Take your pick. Well, she has another mid in the form of this two. This nice little two uppercut does a chunk of damage and flips him over. You get a safe knockdown. That's only minus seven on block. And you get a flip over knockdown from a mid. That's really good. A mid is fast too. This kind of comes right on him. Bang. Uh, three, one is also mid and does 40 damage. Safe on block. Mid, mid, safe, 40 damage. This is just nuts how powerful some of these things are. But look at the range that covers. She can be all the way back here in the cat two. And since Pouncing Tiger takes a step forward, then that three, one, look at the range she covers. From back here, bang, and now she's on you. 40 damage, frame advantage and all that. And then there's the low. The low that knocks you down on any hit, let alone on counter hit, launches your ass. This is just absurdly dangerous. Stuff she does is nuts. But again, we talked about how you can recognize these hand transitions out in the open. We gotta learn to recognize that. You can't jab like you can versus heaven and earth because that one will beat your jab. If you, if you recognize the stance hands right there and you press jab or a high magic four that's like 10 or 11 frames or whatever, the one will beat you and you'll get hit for your 45 damage. So you gotta kinda go for a fast mid, do like your down forward one or something like that, just be careful. So they do, they can learn how to beat this stance out in the open, but during Oki, at the wall, whatever, they're gonna stand up right into this thing or they're gonna get hit by another low and start over, right? Hit them with that low, go right into stance, mix up, etc., etc. never stop. I said you talked about stick and move, stick and move. This character, you wanna stick and stick until they make you do otherwise. So the other stance path, Works pretty much the same. There's a get out of jail free card, so to speak. There's a lot of other counter hit launchers and frame traps, and now there's a low on the table. The only stance that doesn't have a direct frame trap has a low, but the secondary stance has both, a low and a frame trap. So it's just nuts what you can do to people if they let you. So you gotta take away the situations where they can do anything about it, and now you're in control again. So the last mix up situation I wanna talk about is full crouch. She doesn't have a lot of ways to do this. We talked about in the lows how down four, generic down four, and her down back two, pretty much the only moves that leave her in full crouch. But from full crouch, look at what you can do. Four two does nice damage, plus eight on hit, 11 frames. She has while standing one two, nice damage, plus six on hit at 13 frames. While standing one four, even better damage, plus a knockdown at 13 frames. Oh, while standing 3-2, even better damage, a knockdown and a wall bounce at 14 frames. We're not done yet, we got full crouch, down forward 2, we got a 12 frame elbow that knocks down and wall splats. Look at the sheer carnage she unleashes from while standing mids. Like, okay, well, every time she crouches, obviously she's gonna stand right back up. If I ever see her just duck in front of me, obviously she's gonna go for that. Well, no she's not, she has that. Full crouch, down forward 3. This really ties the room together. This makes the whole full crouch situation ultra deadly, in my opinion. Because now you're gonna be thinking about that. Same thing with Kunimitsu. You're thinking about that dumb sweep that trips you, that guarantees that follow-up afterward. That's what's on your mind now. Oh man, she's gonna do this stupid low, I'm gonna get knocked down again. So as soon as you start thinking about, okay, I'm gonna duck, no you're not, you're gonna get mid. So this is a tiny little compact situation, but I think the potential here is huge. I think the damage she can do just from, even if she wants to stay like safer, right? She's on, she, you have to duck. What's gonna make you duck right there, right? While standing one four is a risk and it's not safe. 
But whilst any one two, they're not gonna duck against that. Forget about it. If they do duck, I'll just chalk that up to being random and do it again. <laughs> uh, while standing 3-2 is only, what, like minus 12, minus 13, and it's a wall bounce? Psh, I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna do it. I don't even care. And I have this low to make it all honest. So, man, that's just a simple situation could be that results in some huge damage. No finesse, no setting up needed for that, other than being able to go into crouch, right? You do something like this, and then just crouch their counterattack, you're ready to party. So, I think that's the bulk of mix-up that this character is capable of. Your stances lead to just untold damage once you can set them up properly. You gotta learn how to back yourself up. If you have an opponent that's good at sidestepping, you gotta learn what tracks. If you have an opponent that wants to mash their way out, you gotta learn what beats mashing. And those are all written this way in the notes in the description. It'll say tracks, or it'll say loses to duck jabs, or it'll say beats all button stuff like that. Those are written down. So if you want to just go look at it and help your brain absorb that information visually, I think that can help a long way too. You just have to get used to that notation. That notation is a problem. Cat foot one, cat foot two, I think is really still holding me back a week later, you know, from learning all this stuff cleanly. So offensively, this character is a train wreck coming right at you. The jab series is interesting. She's got enough to work with. She's got good basic pokes that are wide range, frame traps, don't track, but she's got one homing move. That's really important to remember. Some of her really good stuff does not track at all. Some of these like mid high mix up things do not track. You need back four to keep all of that stuff legit. And back four is a good homing move other than the fact that it's a high. So once you have that in play, your forward three does mileage. Your down one gets a ton of mileage. All of these mid-high, mid-mid strings, all of these keep them guessing, keep them guessing. And then your stances. You're sitting out here, and anytime you see them do something, forward, forward, two, stance. Right? Anytime they're out here, forward, forward, two, stance. That's what you want. Getting into this stance is key. You're watching for any 10 frame punish. One, two, two, stance. Anytime they do anything, one, two, two, stance. You want to keep on them all day with that stuff. And if you're not in stances, since that generally requires them to get hit, that's when you're using your, your poke stuff. Your mid-high strings, your mid-mid strings, whatever. Fishing for the occasional counter hit on stuff like that. You're using the basic poking game until you have an opportunity to go to your stance game. That's what it's about. Stick and move, stay fluid, move around the field a lot, but you want to stick and then stick them again. That's the name of the game.